Hey guys, Daryl Shergan, Quest for Vape. I'm doing a review today for the Able Mod from Avid Life. Not that they need a review. This thing is sold out every time it hits retail shops. They sell out. They're very hard to get. Or at least they were back in the summer when this one was released. Um, it's a phenomenal, hard-hitting Mac Mod. It's a classy Mac Mod. Just really elegant. And I want to show you all the details, the working parts and pieces of it broken down and put back together and let's dive down and look at that close-up of the able mod from avid life this is the able mod with the mod father slam cap there you go this is authentic i got this back in august when they first came available and this is the mod beautiful brass the carbon fiber sleeve it doesn't come with this this was separate and this is actually the mod father slam cap with a mutation version 3 deck that's the build I have in it well we'll go up top and look at how this thing vapes vapes very well Let's go ahead and take it apart, see what the pieces are. And again, the RDA is separate. So this runs about $180 to $200 retail for this one. You can get customized sleeves, Eric Hutchinson designs. If you don't know the story, there were a bunch of partners at least, and then they broke up. And... Uh, one set of partners went off to become Continuous Current. Eric Hutchinson went off to become Avid Life. And then we got to see where the majority of the talent in the prior relationship came from. Taking my batteries. Always use some good high drain, high amp draw batteries. Sony VTC4s if you can get your hands on the Authentics. Samsung 25Rs, LG HE4s, LG HB6, the white ones. Okay, this is the tube. We're going to take this apart. Just want you to pay close attention to the. I just washed this. That's what. Oh, this is just water. The machining. Absolutely perfect. This is taking a good five months worth of banging around in my use but uh it's a work of art okay look at the threads this does need to be cleaned fairly often you'll notice a drop in power and it doesn't hit as hard when it oxidizes and gets gunky fire button Sleeve. These are removable. You can get different custom sleeves. These are just carbon fiber graphite, maybe. And here's the tube. It's got an O-ring over here. And the purpose of that O-ring is so that when this is tightened down, when you tighten the base down, this sleeve pushes into the O-ring, doesn't spin, gives it some traction. And that O-ring is not meant to be removed. So I'm not going to remove it. Okay, so there's the sleeve. There's the tube. Here's the hybrid top of the mod. Here's the fire button. You've got a... Your fire button has a locking thread, so you unscrew it to be able to get some throw. And that's, that's all the throw you need. Look at this work of art. Six vent holes at the base. Now let's take a look at the magnets. Be very careful when you're taking this off. You don't want that magnet inside to flip around and connect with the other one. 
They're earth magnets. They're not very strong. They're fairly brittle, and they, and they do crack if they smash into each other. So already you can see this is repelling. See that? I tried to flip around and join up with its counterpart. All right, so let's look at the inside here and then the inside of the fire button, the firing pin. Be very careful with these. Okay, so put that in position. Goes through this magnet. Here's this one. And they meet up. What you do, ah, ah, see? If, they, if that traveled far enough and was traveling fast enough, it would actually crack. So you want to be real careful about that. I would say put that one in whatever side and then put your finger here, put your finger here to see if there's attraction or repulsion. These are kind of pulling at each other. So now I'm going to flip this one over to get the net that, you know, opposites attract with these magnets. So you got to get it to where like cover that with your finger, cover that with your finger so they can't move. You can feel this thing pushing away and then you got to push that guy in a position. It's not that difficult. You just get a finger over them so they don't go flying at each other or they, they tend, if they're loose, they flip around and they want to, they want to like flip negative to positive and then hit each other and then they'll crack. You'll have to go uh, contact the company for spares. So this right here resistance is not a spring. This is resistance from the like poles of the magnets repelling each other. Okay, so now that we know what makes this button, what gives it its throw, and the reason why that's a benefit and a pro, a positive for this device, is because there's no spring in there for voltage drop. So that's what gives you your ability to push this piece of metal up, make contact with the battery, complete the circuit, and that's what's going on with that. Okay, so. Here's how we put it back together. Is it worth spending $180 for this? Hell yeah. Now, if you want to get fancy and get all kinds of colored sleeves, that's your choice. That's, that's personal style. But as far as the mod itself goes, it's worth owning. It's the nicest, classiest, hardest hitting mod I've ever owned. The only thing that could hit harder than this, in my humble opinion, is perhaps the copper version of this. Although I, I'm told the aluminum version hits very hard also. There's like no voltage drop in the aluminum, but I don't know. I like the brass. It's very nautical. And I'm going to caution everybody, this is a hybrid connection. So you want to make sure that your RDA that you use, your atomizer you use, has at least a a pronounced protruding 510. There's not much of one here. This is actually about the least amount of distance that I would feel comfortable with because if this is not protruding, then you have positive and negative connecting with the top of the battery for a dead short, a hard short, and that's a problem. So when you're using a hybrid mech mod like the Able mod, Make sure you're using an RDA that has a nice, substantially protruding. You can see this sticks out. I wouldn't call that substantial. It sticks out enough, and it's got a nice insulator ring, and I'm always constantly inspecting this to make sure that this is still protruding, because that could change over time. I'll show you another example. Here's the Temple RDA. from Vapor's Clouds, Vapor's Cloud. This is a nice protruding, that protrudes nicer, further. I like that better. And I got this also to mixy match with the Able. It, 
almost closely lines up. Not perfect, but almost perfectly matched. Maybe hangs out, uh, you know, maybe a, a, a half a millimeter on each side too thin. Thin? Okay, so you get the idea. Uh, don't use sub ohm tanks on this mod, period. Do not use. Don't go put your Heracles on there. Why? Because the Heracles doesn't have much. It actually has a protruding pin, but most of them don't. And that's not enough to give me comfort. Don't use tanks on mech mods. Here's another example. This is the crown tank with the Quest for Vape Special Edition. See that pin? That's just fine for something that has a contact 510 connection like this. No bueno for hitting the top of the battery. Understand? Capiche? Don't do it. Here's another good example. This is, uh, this one protrudes very far. This is the Sub-Zero RDA. This one I got, it looks, it looks cool on there. But it's a problem. It's, it's got bottom airflow, so it leaks a lot from the bottom if you overdrip. And I don't like, I mean, that looks nice, but I don't like having juice go down that hybrid connection and then soak my batteries. Contrary to a recent parody video that I did with some friends, it is not good to get juice in the top of your batteries or anywhere near your batteries. So, all right, so I was just showing you some mixy matchy, my favorite matchup. Which is why I spent, I think I, I paid like 75 or 80 bucks for the Mod Father cap and the Mutation RDA came in a, in a package from Long Island Vaporium in Ronkonkoma, New York. There is also an RDA, a specific RDA that Avid Life makes. I forget the name of it, but I didn't buy that. Um, the whole kit and caboodle together was like maybe 140, 150 together combined. So I just went with the... This used to be called the Captain's Cap. I love it though. Really awesome. Let's go up top, vape on this, and talk about the experience of vaping. On hey guys, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed seeing the details. If you don't own one of these yet, I highly recommend you save up for it. Save that cigarette smoking budget of yours uh, for however long it takes to be able to get this mod. It's worth owning. Assuming, of course, you like mech mods and you like vaping this way and sub ohm. Don't worry, your life is still complete if you don't own one of these. But if you like vaping with mech mods, this is one worth buying, worth owning. I love this. And uh, ever since I got it back in August, I've been enjoying it. It just, it's heavy, it's brass, it feels nice in the hand, it's quality gentleman's vape. So nice. Um, I will say a couple of things about it. It's a hybrid mech mod, so know what you're doing. Do not use, and I'll, I'll say this over and over again, do not use sub-ohm tanks. They're not designed and intended. They have no protruding 510 connection. They're not intended for direct connection to the battery. Use good batteries. Use high drain, high amp rating batteries, legit batteries. Do not believe the wrap and what it tells you on the wrap of a battery. There's no such thing as a 40 amp battery. Don't be fooled by that shit. Um, Eric Hutchinson himself recommends you use Sony VTC4s. Uh, there's a reason for that. They can handle the high drain. Um, I'm gonna go one step further because Sony VTC4s are not commonly available easily and there's a lot of clones out there and knockoffs. Uh, Samsung 25Rs, these green ones, they perform excellently in a mech mod and there's much, much lower risk of getting knockoffs because these are made in such big uh, supply. These used to be blue and now they're green. Um, but they're 25 amp high drain intended for use with uh, sub ohm vaping in a single 18650 mech mod. Also the yellow LGs, the HE4s, those are fantastic for this type of vaping. Um, the white wrapper ones, the LG HB6, which they stopped making. 
Um, if you can get your hands on some Pegasus batteries, the 1500 milliamp, I believe it's type E, uh, which is the high drain, uh, 35 amp legit battery. Those are good for use in hybrid mech mods, mech mods in general with a single 18650. So that's my speech on don't use tanks on hybrids. Make sure your RDA has a nice protruding 510. Check it frequently and often because that could change over time. This could wear down, push up, screw in. Your battery tops could dent and make sure your batteries in good, are in good condition. So that's my little safety speech. Other than that, um, I'm really enjoying this. I recently picked up the Mod Father cap, which is designed to go on either their, uh, their RDA that they make from Avid Life or the Tugboat version 2 or the uh, this is the Mutation version 3. And I just used the base from that because it's one of my all-time favorite. Probably, if I had to pick one RDA for the rest of my life, it would be the Mutation 3. That's been my favorite, best performing, best producing, reliable go-to, easy to build on. I can do a flavor build. I can do a cloud chasing build. I can do both. And then with this slam cap, this captain's cap, this mod father cap, um, it just looks nice and classy and elegant and balanced it out. Um, the cost on this is due to the design, the workmanship, and the materials. It's brass. Brass is not cheap. Um, and copper, the pin inside. The quality of it, the performance of it, just it's my favorite. My second favorite is my rig and roughneck. But I would say this this takes it. And this was by far my best mechanical mod purchase of 2015. And it is my favorite. I can't say it enough. Now, as far as hard hitting stuff that I own, yeah, I got other stuff that hits hard. If I want to go with a nice, reliable, regulated device, a nice big fat sub ohm tank that can rock 100 to 200 watts. I have stuff for that. DNA 200 for temperature control and beast mode vaping on regular wattage. But when I just want to enjoy myself, it's usually this. When I'm just hanging out, nobody around, no camera rolling, it's usually dripping on this. I just love this mod. I think it's sexy as hell. The optic is nice. The um, this, There's maybe five or six different mods in this line from Avid Life that are just superb. The Diplomat, the Timekeeper, the Optic, the Able mod, then there's the Shock and Awe that looks like a 75 caliber um, casing shell. That's an awesome one. And then there's some other ones coming out. There's going to be another uh, a Manhattan uh, version 2, like Avid Life version 2. And I, I've had my hands on quite a lot of different mech mods. I love this one the most. I'm not knocking. I'm not disparaging. I'm sure there will be chatter down in comments. Oh, no, the TVL is the best. Oh, no, the Switch mod version 2. Oh, no, I love my Dominus. Oh, great. I welcome it all. And you can all express your opinions. This is... One guy's vaping opinion, I love my Able Mod. It didn't need a review from me, but my channel needed a review on this because it's one of my favorite pieces of vaping equipment of all time. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Quest for Vape, thank you very much for watching.